Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking a little bit more into inflation and looking at an economic concept known as the Phillips curve. More specifically, we'll look at different types of inflation, what's causing prices to go up, and we'll discuss what the Phillips curve is and the relationship that it exhibits between inflation and unemployment. When it comes to inflation, there are two different ways in which we can see prices rise. There's cost push inflation, that's when the supply curve is shifting to the left when short-run aggregate supply shifts to the left, creating higher prices and lower output, that stagflation situation that we talked about in a previous unit, as well as demand pull inflation. That's when aggregate demand is shifting to the right. In that case, price levels are also rising. Visually, cost push inflation uh, is again where short run aggregate supply shifts to the left, like when there was the oil embargo of the 1970s. When that happens, short run aggregate supply shifts to the left and moves our equilibrium point along the aggregate demand curve to a point at which prices are now higher and output is less. Demand pull inflation, shifting aggregate demand to the right as a result of expansionary monetary or fiscal policy. When that happens, aggregate demand is going to shift, moving our equilibrium point along the short on aggregate supply curve to a point at which output is increased, but price level has also gone up. Now, government could try and attempt to pursue expansionary monetary policy in order to try and increase output, like we talked about in a previous conversation, but there are consequences to that. And so classical economic theory sort of always sort of argued against government uh, intervention because from their perspective, all you end up with is this idea of neutrality of money. That if the economy is in long run equilibrium and the government tries to use expansionary policy in order to create more output, what it ends up with in the long run is simply higher prices in the same level of output as before. Visually, we could be at the situation of long run equilibrium and if we, and if we pursue expansionary monetary policy, aggregate demand will shift to the right. Output will increase, but prices will have gone up. So in the short term, there's an inflationary gap and an increase in output. However, because of this increase in, uh, in employment, wages, nominal wages should rise, causing short-run aggregate supply to shift back to the left. And when it does that, it's going to bring the economy back to long-run equilibrium, back to a potential output, but now at a higher price level uh, than before. And so a classical economist would say it's not worth it. Now, other economists might look at it and say, in the short run, we can see an increase in, in uh, output and how long it takes for the short run to adjust could lead to some significantly improved uh, living standards for people during that time period. There are consequences, however, to the decision to pursue expansionary policy, especially when the economy is at a starting point of long run equilibrium. One of those is known as the inflation tax. It's not a tax that you pay to the federal government necessarily, but it's a tax in terms of the loss of purchasing power. When the Federal Reserve monetizes debt by printing money to help pay the bills of the United States uh, government, it creates more money supply, which leads to higher price levels or inflation because of that neutrality of money principle. And so when your money is beginning to lose value, you're beginning to fall behind uh, where you were in terms of purchasing power. There's a really good video explaining this whole process from NPR and PBS, and I will link that in the description. Another potential consequence is hyperinflation. That's when inflation gets out of control, when there's such a, a rapid and massive increase in inflation that prices are growing by hundreds, if not thousands of a percent. And that creates some really significant negative consequences for the economy. Again, there's a really good example from Planet Money as well as from um, MRU. So I'll link both of those in the description as well. Essentially, what happens is the government prints money to pay off its debt. Its decision to pay off debt by printing new money creates an inflation tax, which reduces the value of money that people hold in the economy. Because their money is worth less, it's going to take more to buy the same amount of goods as before, so the government creates an increase in money supply to help meet that need for liquidity. But that creates a further inflation tax, which further reduces the, the value of money, which leads to a need for more money supply to be created, 
and so on and so forth. And if it gets out of control, as it did in places like Zimbabwe or Venezuela, you can see literally millions of a percent change in the value of money in a very short period of time. And so governments have to be very careful when following expansionary policy that they don't set off this, this chain of events that leads to a spiral of increasing prices. The Phillips curve is a tool we use in economics to look at the connection between the unemployment rate and inflation. It has an inverse relationship in that high unemployment is typically associated with low inflation and high inflation is typically associated with low unemployment. If you're in an, in an inflationary gap situation, lots of people are employed, but prices are rising. Versus if you're in a, in a recessionary gap where there is low inflation, but high unemployment. We can see that relationship graphically. We could ask ourselves, what happens to unemployment and prices when aggregate demand shifts to the right? And we can see that when aggregate demand shifts to the right, we've got higher prices that now outputs beyond potential output, which means we're hiring more people than before, so unemployment should be dropping. So high price, low unemployment when aggregate demand is shifting to the right. And if it shifts to the left, we would see a decrease in output, which means we're hiring fewer people than at potential output at full employment. So higher unemployment, but prices are coming down. And so we can track all of the potential combinations of inflation rate and unemployment rate and put them on a graph and we would get the short run Phillips curve. Now, when you're drawing the short run Phillips curve, the axes are inflation rate on the vertical, which should make sense because in the ADAS model, the vertical axis had to do with price level. So anything related to changes in price level would stay on the vertical. And then the horizontal axis has unemployment rate for the short run Phillips curve, which again should make sense because as we see output changing, we can see changes in the unemployment rate. Um, so the axes are, are connected between the ADAS graph and the Phillips curve. Now the Phillips curve can shift under certain circumstances, and Jacob Clifford has a really useful video on that. Um, it's not worth trying to recreate the wheel when he's done such a good job of that, so I will link that video as well in the description for you to take a look at. When you watch this video, pay careful attention not only to why or under what circumstances the Phillips curve will shift, but also his explanation for the existence of the long-run Phillips curve, which is also pretty useful. We'll talk more about these concepts more in class, give you a chance to work on some problems, and I will see you then.